Hi, I'm Aaron J. Trump, and I'm going to show you how I use advanced room correction for almost free. No expensive room correction software like Sonarworks necessary. This is all thanks to my friend David Brancato, who invented this technique and showed me how to do it. There's three basic steps to this process. First, you're going to measure your room, then you're going to build a filter, and then you're going to implement that filter. Pretty simple. Here's what you'll need. You need a measurement microphone. I'm using the Mini DSB U-Mic 1. You'll need measurement software. I'm going to use REW, which is free. You'll need a filter making software. We're going to use Rephase, which is free. And then you're going to need a convolution plugin. I'm going to use M Convolution EZ, which is free. I've also used Freeverb, also free. Or Hang Loose Convolver is a paid option, $129, which is super, super cool. And David recommends that one. Also, if you want to apply the filter system-wide, not just in your DAW, but to everything you listen to, you'll need some kind of a system-wide plug-in thing that you can plug in, plug-ins, on your uh, main outputs. So I'm going to use Pedalboard 2. It's free, but it's not being supported anymore. So another really good option is J River, which is about $80. And that's a super good option that David uses. Okay, wait. First, before you start measuring, you're going to need to make the room like it's going to be. So if you've got crap all over the place or your acoustic treatment isn't set, fix that first. Now we're going to set up our measurement mic, which is an omnidirectional condenser designed for measurement. So it has a super flat response. You're going to point the condenser straight up and you're going to place it right where your head is when you're mixing. So that should be in an equilateral triangle with the tweeters of your speakers, ideally. This is your main position. David has a filter method which uses just this position. You'll measure four times at that position. But for my method, I'm going to use his cube method, which looks like this. So a little video where David put together how it looks. Those green spots are where the capsule of your mic would be. So you notice there are nine spots, including the main position. So you're going to measure nine times. You're actually going to measure more than nine times because you're going to measure twice for each position. So you're going to measure left speaker and then right speaker for each position. Okay, first things first. We've got our mic set up, but first, before we can measure, we want to get our SPL levels calibrated. This is because we want our speakers to be outputting at an optimal level that the filters will be built around and so that we make sure our speakers are balanced. So that optimal level is around 70 to 80 dBs, and we're going to just set our speakers that way. The way you do this is set your board at a nominal level where you will want to pull that fader when you want the optimal level, whatever that is. And then just leave it there. Don't change that. When we measure, we'll go into REW, into the measurement window. It's the same measurement window we'll use to do our actual room response measurements, and we'll hit check levels. What this will do is output white noise out of one speaker at a time, and you can tweak the volume levels for each speaker by themselves. There should be a knob on the back of the speaker. So if I click that, I get white noise for a little bit. You can change the amount of time. Um, you'll see the level right here where it says level low. That's because my mic isn't connected, but yours should say somewhere around 70 to 80 dBs. I'm setting mine at 75 dBs, although when I mix, I'll probably mostly listen way quieter than that. That's my optimal level, and I'll always check mixes at that level to get the most out of the curve. Oh, P.S. If you have a subwoofer, now is a good time to calibrate that too. You can read my article that I posted on my blog. I'll put a link in the description about how to do that. Okay, now we're ready to actually make measurements. So you're going to go back to your measurement window in REW, and for each mic position, you're going to measure twice, once for left speaker and once for right. Here's where you set where the sweep comes out of. Speaker, left. Let's say I want to start with right or left. Let's start with left. And then make sure the name your filter or your measurement something that you'll remember that you know which it is. So in this case, I'll say main L so for main position, left speaker. And then when I go to do the right speaker, I have to remember, change both of these and name it main right. And then you just click start. One thing to note, there's a delay setting. 
So it's right here, delay seven seconds I have setting. You don't have to have that, but it's nice because you don't wanna be in this position right here sitting in front of the desk. You wanna be out of the room or way in the back, lay down, get out of the way so your body doesn't influence how the acoustics uh, respond. So that's what the delay is for. And then when you click start, there's a little delay, five, four, I'm getting out of the way, three, two, one, and a beep. That's what you that beep, that last tweak, is when you know it's done, and the filter measurement will come up on the screen. So, uh, here's what it looks like when I did it. Okay, so we've got the room cleaned up as best we can, and the acoustics are what they're generally going to be. And now we've got our measurement mic set up. Here, this is at head height, and it's equidistant, an e equilateral triangle from the middle of the tweeters. Now we've got REW set up on the computer. Got it set up to do the left side first. And there's a little bit of delay so I can get out of the way. Getting out of the way and I have to stay quiet. Done. So then we've got, we got a lot of craziness there. Okay, now that you're done measuring, you should have a bunch of measurement response curves that look like this. And you'll see over here on the left side, I've got plenty. I did all my positions, all nine positions in the box, left and right for each, and all of these represent a measurement curve that's slightly different for each one, as you can see. What you're gonna do next, just save this as, uh, save all measurements is what I would do, and you're gonna save it, it's called an MDAT file, and then that's the file you're gonna take into Rephase to do your next step. Okay, here's my big secret. I didn't do this part. David did this part for me. He made me my filters in rephase and sent them back to me. You will probably have to do your own. So, to start with, I'm gonna refer you to David's tutorials on making rephase filters because he's way better at it than me. And this is the most complicated part, so pay attention really closely to David. Okay, now that you're back and you've made your filters, I'm gonna cut to a video from yesterday of me implementing those filters. So, the way I do this in my DAW, I make buses, so I make a studio bus, whereas I have another bus that outputs to headphones, so I don't filter that. And in the studio bus, I put a plug in, M Convolution Easy. And to set up M Convolution Easy with your filter, you are going to do a couple of things. Make sure it's all the way on wet, no widening, no high pass, no blow pass, normalize off, click custom path, you're going to find your path. This is simply where you've saved your filter, which is a WAV file. You're going to click it, and then it's done. That's all you do with M Convolution EZ. Another plugin you can use that I didn't mention before is Freeverb. There's some settings in Freeverb. So you're going to pick, you're going to load your, your WAV there, and then you have to make sure threshold is zero, CI is zero relative 10, or dry is mute, uh, all the way wet, zero, no low pass, no high pass, no IDL or IDL zero, uh, wideness, just 100, strength, I think that is one, and then zero, zero, one for LRB, everything else is uh, zeros except for ISS one. So those are your settings for free verb if you're using free verb. So one more thing you might like to know as far as implementing these filters is how to implement them system wide so that you can listen to anything, anywhere, all the time with your filters. So the way I'm using it is I'm using Pedalboard 2, which is free. You can also use J River or a number of other things. I'm not gonna go through quite a lot of detail because you do need another package called VB Audio Virtual Cable. I'm gonna refer you to TMEC Music on YouTube. Uh, put the YouTube link uh, to his tutorial in the comment or in the description because I think uh, it was pretty good and that's how it got me, how I got up and running. Okay, there you go. So room correction, the pretty much freeway via David Brancato, the genius of geniusness. Bye.